Yet here's another college book. You've all heard this. Our biochemistry is 98% the same as that from a chimpanzee. Proves we evolved from chimps, right? Well, you know, why don't they tell us about the differences? There are thousands of differences. Our hair, feet, brain, back, vocal cords, hips, etc. You have more vertebra in your backbone than chimps. They don't tell you that, do they? That must have been a tough evolutionary process. Slowly over millions of years, evolving another vertebra in your backbone? Wouldn't you be laying on the ground in pain? I mean, wouldn't the coyote come and remove you by a natural selection? <laughs> Absolutely. In fact, why don't they tell us that we evolved from mice? So we're 96% the same as a mouse. Your biochemistry is 50% the same as that from a banana. <laughs> Anyone evolved from a banana? Last time I was here, half the people raised their hand. You know, if genetic similarity proves evolution, why don't they say we evolved from sunflowers? Our cytochrome C is closest to that from a sunflower. Human eyes are closest to that from the octopus. Human skin is closest to that from pigs. Human hemoglobin structure is closest to that from root nodules. Human milk is closest to that from donkeys. Human lysosome is closest to that from chickens. On and on we can go. Why don't they claim we evolved from these other things? Because you would laugh in their face. They pick one similarity with chimps and claim that proves evolution, and they hide these other things so you don't see how ridiculous their religious belief is. In fact, recent studies, this from Nature Magazine, say we're only 92% the same as chimps, and the more they get in the DNA, that number is going to continually drop and drop. Similar DNA or biochemistry proves we have a, the same designer. You see, if we didn't have similar biochemistry with other plants and animals, we wouldn't be able to eat anything except other people. Yeah, we wouldn't be able to digest it. That's proof of intelligent design. Well, evolutionists say that they have proof from evolution from embryology. And they show these drawings of humans and different critters in the embryonic stages. And they came up with what's called the theory of recapitulation. Now, how's a kid supposed to argue with this? Kids, ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. Anyone want to argue with that? How are you supposed to argue with that? You're just going to believe it, right? Well, this was put together by Ernst Haeckel. He read Darwin's book a year after it came out in 1860, and he became an avid evolutionist. And he said that 10 years later, he had the same problem evolutionists have today. He couldn't find any evidence to support Darwin's theory, which isn't really a theory. If I have time, I'll explain that in a few minutes. But he came up with the ontogeny, recapitulates phylogeny. He took a human in the embryonic stage, those are his drawings from left to right across the top. And he, he said, he made drawings of salamanders and chickens and fish and said, look, they all look the same. You're going through your evolutionary stages in your mother's womb. Ontogeny recapitulates phylogeny. And they use these in abortion clinics. They say, you're not, you're not cutting up a baby. It's in its fish phase or its pig phase, see? But those are the actual photos right below. It was proven five years in 1874 that uh, he had taken a human embryo. He made copies of it. And um, it's a total fraud. Proven in 1874, still taught in textbooks today. Still taught in textbooks today. And, you know, the thing is that fraud in the 19th century is still fraud in the 21st century. Now, they say these little folds under the neck, they say those are gill pouches or gill slits. You're going through your fish phase. Those are folds in the skin that later develop into the bones and organs in your throat and neck area. There's no slit. There's no gill. And these things have nothing to do with breathing whatsoever. Many of us have multiple chins, but none of us can breathe underwater with any of them. And don't hold your breath trying it. Well, evolutionists claim that things evolve bigger and